The Deputy Director General of the World Health Organization said Monday night, containment is not a feasible option anymore. The disease is in too many countries in order to contain it. You can't close the borders, and they don't recommend even trying to close the borders, and they don't recommend putting travel bans on people coming. Closing the borders virtually never works. If we're going to put people on the border asking people how they feel, we might as well put them on the East River saying, are you from Queens? You know, do you have a temperature? It's much too transmissible. People do go over borders. It's time to do what they call mitigation instead of containment. Most of the deaths have been, so far have been in Mexico. Nobody knows exactly why that's happened. It is not likely that it's a different strain of the virus. The sort of leading theory is that there are possibly tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of other cases of swine flu, mild cases, maybe even cases with no symptoms in Mexico. And then what you're seeing there is just a tip of the iceberg and a small number of cases of the ones that died. Another thing that may have happened is that in the beginning days of this epidemic, which probably started at least in March, a lot of people went to their doctor. They had no idea that there was an unusual swine flu, so the doctor would say, I think you've got flu, go home and rest and you know, take regular flu medicine. So people went home, but instead of getting better, they died. So you can get a spike in cases that way. Every case has a sort of multiplier effect, which is that one person goes on to infect two people who go on to infect two people each, so you get four, and it climbs again and again. The epidemic curve of the 1918 flu looked like this. You had a, a small number of deaths in the, in the late summer and early fall, I think it was, and then it dropped down again. And then you had a huge spike in deaths in the beginning of the winter, and then it dropped down again. And there was another late spike later, about two thirds of the time. And what you're trying to do with mitigation is basically smooth out that epidemic curve, which is the number of cases and the onset dates so that you don't have these high spikes. High spikes means lots of cases, lots of people going to the emergency room. You want to delay it. That's shifting the curve to the right by using measures like hand washing, staying home when you're sick, and eventually possibly wearing masks and closing big events, things like that that keeps people apart from each other during the outbreak. You can stretch out the number of cases. And when you do that, one advantage is that you push the flu into the hot weather. Tr flu does not transmit as well hot weather. Also, you buy more time. If we can just slow down the transmission of cases, we might get to the point where a lot of people can be vaccinated. Instead of the giant swelling of cases and the sharp uprise of the curve, you can, uh, you can slow it out considerably, and then ultimately you end up with total fewer cases overall, which means you've saved lives.